My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. Whoa. This is a really like, you know, like evil Christmas music, isn't it? It really is quite evil. It's like, it's a bit threatening. I love it. Let's just be merry and nice. Be happy. We'll kill that for a bit because like, I don't want to like scare people. <laughs> this is festive season after yeah. all. Um, we've decided we're going to do a bit of the, the, the Great Canadian Baking Show holiday special. Indeed. Because we need to celebrate, you know, the festive season. Uh, it's, it's, it's Christmas. Not Christmas. Christmas. My birthday season. Tomorrow. So, and, um, so therefore, it's a celebration of me. Yep. Um, um, it's also Saturnalia. Yep. If you want to just, you know, go ancient Roman. And there's some Christian um, festivities in there somewhere too. Uh, some um, dude, Jesus was born. Yeah. Um, the, the Jews are celebrating so much oil. As as like, um, as, as, as Krusty the Crown Clown once said, you know, a Merry Christmas, a tip-top tet. Uh, a respectful <laughs> Ramadan, um, all of those things. All that he threw the druids in together. are dancing around Stonehenge. Exactly. So we just thought we'd come on and we'd talk about the Great Canadian Baking Show Christmas special. Yes. Um, so we're just sitting here, and what was that? That's my new doorbell. You got a doorbell? I do. Who's the, you got people like people at the door? Yes. Who could that be? Who could that be? Well, hang on a minute. Let me just check. Oh my God! It's James, Megan, and Timothy. Woo! Woo! Wow! Woo. wow. Hello. That's kind of carolers. That was a theatre of the mind. Um, how are the three of you going? We're great. I'm great. Yeah. Good, awesome thank great. you. James has been elected spokesperson. <laughs> We're great. Canadian bakeries. So you're all handling, handling different elements. Um, James is handling your well-being. Um, <laughs> Questions on well-being will be directed to James. <laughs> so um, questions on, on winning, and we'll start with that, go to Timothy. Well done, Tim. Woo. Thank you so much. What a surprise. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I, loved, I did love your comment, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into the episode, but I did love your comment where after the technical, where you said, I don't care what happens after this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I had very low bar set for myself going in, so I thought, you know, I've already passed it. It's like, <laughs> I'm happy with this. <laughs> that's, the, that's the spirit. Set the bar low. <laughs> so yeah. I'm presuming you went on a Luke Skywalker-like journey. Who was your Yoda in, like... <laughs> <laughs> Was it, and was it Jay? <laughs> like, or did Absolutely. you just get everyone in? <laughs> um, you can tell by uh, my decisive answer here that I know a lot about, you know, Star Wars. And you can tell well. Christy, by her question, has recently watched Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, not recently. You're making it sound like I'm a newbie. No, you went to see Rise of Star Wars. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been watching Star Wars since I was five years old. We only had, because we had a Betamax tape, um, because my dad believed in quality, not quantity. <laughs> um, so we just watched Empire Strikes Back about 600 times in my youth. Then I found there were other Star Wars movies as I got older. So anyway, back to Tim. Yes. Uh- <laughs> and you'll win. Who, who was you, how, how many training montages did you go through to get that good? Oh, I mean, like, um, a many, we'll say. <laughs> I, say- I mean, I... I don't know. I mean, I know that Bruno was being really nice and, and trying to talk you up a lot. But mm-hmm. when they got, but when they, no, when they got to the judging, what I mean by that is, did you yeah. hear the way that Bruno did it? Yeah. I want to know what happened after the series. Did he go away and practice or something? And I'm like, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Compliment. I think there. Uh, I I came into season two, um, just ready to have fun, yeah. and um, I think that there was a stark contrast between season two versus one year later. I think Bruno just really was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Timothy, wow, I didn't, didn't know you had that in. Well done. <laughs> yeah. That was wonderful, though. And I do love, oh, no, we should go in order. Do we have to go in order for this one? We can just go crazy. We can go we? wherever we want. I have notes on the episode and we'll talk about different things as they come up. Okay, so I want to know about Santa's elves and their fort versus like James's Danish elves. <laughs> and mushrooms. Yes, so we <laughs> together. Yeah. Um, Who won that war? Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Danes, that's for sure. <laughs> Is that why you built the fort? Was that to protect <laughs> from the invading Danes? Danes. <laughs> Yeah, that was. I knew exactly what James was going to bake, so I had to bake in response to that. Yeah, Viking Viking elves on their way to destroy your fort and and bring pagan cheer to the Christmas time. 
you know, because mm. like they're both fighting for cheer. It's just different types. Different types. Of cheer. Well, what I liked about yours, James, was that technically what happened was I actually think you were sabotaged by you know your own Danish elves. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They are yeah. creators of mischief. <laughs> yeah, they just left. They just they just had too many of those magic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Much ack of it and off they went. <laughs> and, and you do get changed and go crispy, so I presume they just went and peed on it before they left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that just <laughs> melted. That was like, I love that name <laughs> where you walked over it at the end and looked at James and went, they just look like mushrooms. Yeah, that was all they were. I mean, like, I made a field of mushrooms. That's what I made. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I have, we had this little patch of um, Fly Agaric crop up at work, which is quite funny. Um, so I did watch them start to decompose and they did look like that about six weeks in or no, probably four weeks in <laughs> did, after yeah. sprouting. So. so are you telling James that for the holiday bake, baking show, yeah. he made a field of decomposing mushrooms? Yeah. That's basic, no, that's fair. That's a fair, <laughs> fair assessment, I think. It's like, I, I don't think there's like a two second shot of what my modeling chocolate looked like. It was, it was <laughs> a soup. <laughs> I mean... You had some- I kept trying to pick it up and it was just like melt between my fingers. Like, oh no. I mean, you had some very, look, I was so pleased to see my Patronus back in, in the pavilion. Um, because like in, in the cookies, for example, you had that great idea of, well, if this doesn't work, I'll just stick my drawing on the front of them. Mm. And <laughs> yeah. I would have done that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very me move. It came close to that. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll save your big moment, of course, towards the end, because, you know, you don't want to start with... He's owed to Australia. Yeah, you're owed to Australia. We don't want to start with that. We'll finish <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, Megan, I couldn't relate to your, your showstopper at all because there was snow and like, we're not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rub it in a little harder right now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's rubbing it in and all How honesty. I mean, the snow around you today. I don't want snow. It's too cold. We woke up to like frost and snow everywhere this morning. So I'd prefer what you have. Well, well, how many times have, do I actually need to stress to all of the Canadian bakers? The solution to this is that you all just come on a big bulk holiday. Yeah, just just move down here. No, no, migrate. migrate. Just <laughs> yep. don't come by boat because our government are very anti that. Migration, though, apparently is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Just, I'll just definitely run in. I just yeah. got to point out there's no snow whatsoever where I am. But <laughs> <laughs> James, not helping at all. Not trying. Honestly. <laughs> where are you on the snow front? We never get. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's probably got a lot of snow yeah. down. I mean, I'm in right? Edmonton, so I'm right by oh, Megan, right. where uh, we're freezing together. Yeah, <laughs> we are. It was frosty this morning, but I guess kind of nice. Only minus twelve today. So. Yeah, I mean, like considering we have like weather that's like minus thirty, I think <laughs> we're grateful. I think it was nice, right? Exactly. I suppose I should be grateful for once yeah. in my life. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's 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 a very cold summer's day here at the moment. It's yeah. only twenty four degrees, which is. <laughs> In, in oh Celsius, like, and that's really cold. I mean, the other that day, not. actually got Broke to records. 44. Yeah. Broke Australian record. We got to 44, 45 the other day in Celsius. And I, I will stop listening. I change rent. Oh. <laughs> it's about being happy. We're having a Merry Christmas. That was, <laughs> like, that was, that was about what the bells temperature was in the tent. And <laughs> that was about what the temperature was in the tent. In the yeah, I was going to oh, ask about I was going to ask about Unreal. That. Because mm-hmm. at one point, Christy looked and there was one shot. She went, is that snow? And then they did the flip angle and it was quite clearly hot. And Tim was talking about how hot it was. And we went, no, <laughs> no, that's definitely not snow. Like, you recorded that when? Summer? It was yeah. Jul- uh, July. Not July? very, not very. July snow. long weekend. Yeah. yeah. It was probably the frothing of my mouth on the floor of dying <laughs> of heat. That was probably the snow you saw. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to temp the chocolate and the, 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 t- the thermometer, I had like a thermometer on the bench and it was reading 100 Fahrenheit. <gasps> mm-hmm. So was mine. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how Christmas is in Australia. And it's even better when you've got one member of the family who doesn't think it's Christmas until you're roasting some kind of fucking meat and <laughs> boiling everyone to death in the kitchen. Yeah. I mean, most sensible what? families just serve seafood and like cold things. Hey, and- everybody, let's do roast pork. But it's 40, really it's forty two mm. degrees Celsius. Let's do roast pork. Oh my gosh! The best part about Christmas is cranking the ovens and having the house all toasty because of the ovens being on. 
Yeah, yeah see, it, for us. We, so the best part of it is cranking the air conditioner. Yep. Get um, your oscillating fan. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. I love it. That was yeah. the thing. So for Australians watching your, your holiday special, it, it sort really, of felt like Christmas. It was real. <laughs> <laughs> And then you, t- you took us out of it with the snow. I mean, see, what Van Dana made, That's more that a... felt Australian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there yeah. was a beach. <laughs> there was sand. It looked sunny. So what are some of your holiday traditions? That might not be traditional, traditional Christmas, but is there anything that happens in each of your families that it wouldn't be Christmas without, I don't know, Uncle Jeff dancing naked on the table? <laughs> <laughs> Tim, do you have anything uh, like yeah. that happens? For us, um, yeah. our extended family is all in China, so it's just us. And usually Christmas is really just an, ex- an excuse just to make a lot of good food and stuff ourselves and yeah. just be happy. <laughs> um, Any excuse to make good food is great. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the extent of it. That's the point. Uh, is there now an expectation that you'll be bringing baked goods or...? <laughs> Oh, it's like every time I go anywhere, they're like, oh, Tim, you're on a baking show. When are you going to bring me a cake? Ha, ha, ha. And it's like, well, you give me four hours and then <laughs> But yeah, I will be baking a Christmas cake. Give me, give me four hours and the budget of CBC to back it up and I'll make whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Mine is making, I make a Christmas pudding every year and no one else in my house likes it. So I make it and I eat it. Like the whole, it's like, it's still a big family size one though. So. <laughs> That's hey, the, that's the yeah. giant Christmas pudding, traditional English pudding. Do you, do you put like, your own silver coins in every slice? So you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <I've found another laughs> one. I'm the blessed child. <laughs> James, can you send me that recipe, please? My dad is asking me to make Christmas pudding and oh, right. I can't stand it, but he wants <laughs> it. And I, I don't have a recipe. So I've been like searching one all day. So please, please. please I will please. too. I will too. Thank I mean, you. <laughs> We get when we get a Christmas pudding of some description, I drive it around to my parents' house and go, Here you go, Dad, because he's the only one who eats them. Yeah. I That's my dad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't eat Christmas pudding. The first I time just, the, yeah. sorry, the first time I ever tried to make a Christmas pudding, I didn't it was only a, it was only about five or six years ago. And I um no, I guess it was more than that. But anyway, I tried to I didn't really know how to do it and I um I'd made the pudding and then I kind of thought I'm supposed to like soak this in booze, yeah. You know? So I <laughs> So what I did was I took the pudding, and I, I, I put it in a Tupperware, <laughs> back of the fridge, and I filled it to the brim with like all the oh. booze that I could find in the like in the back of the cupboard that was brown. Oh my gosh! All kinds of stuff. And I left it. This was like November, and I left it there for like six weeks, just soaking it back of the fridge <laughs> in in like a gallon of booze. And then Christmas Day we got it out, and and I shouldn't know by how quickly it caught fire once. I- <laughs> <laughs> it was like a you know twelve inch. Of flame. course it did. <laughs> Less Bombay, more napalm. <laughs> I love the smell of pudding in the morning. It smells like victory. <laughs> Me and my father-in-law kind of tried this, and it like went into your mouth, and you could feel it like coming up through like the back of your sinuses. This kind of <laughs> alcohol vapor, and and like down into your lungs, and it kind of burned. And it was just the most. Like, so, so, so Megan, do you want that recipe? Yes. Or? <laughs> you know what? To deal with my family on Christmas, I will take that recipe. <laughs> oh my God, my mom might listen to this. I'm kind of kidding. I, can fire, James, actually. I would like to have a sample of my mom's Christmas cake. She started soaking the fruit and booze um, from October one year. I think it actually started to ferment in, in the bowl. <laughs> She'd go up and see her, she's like, oh, that's coming along well. And I said, like, people would take a bite and then not be able to drive. Well, it was well, funny <laughs> to say that. There was a story a couple of years ago, <laughs> verified as true. There was a guy in Sydney who got pulled over by a random breath test unit by the police. And he blew over the limit. He hadn't had anything to drink, but he'd had his mother's trifle. <laughs> and apparently she makes it quite boozy. <laughs> Yeah. And it was so heavy on the booze, he blew over the legal limit. <laughs> Got done for oh drink driving. <laughs> I'm just, I'm way back at that pudding. That's incredible, James. <laughs> Did you use well, it to like, light the way home thing. for aircraft? Just put it outside and light it and go landing. It was, it also doubled as the Yule log. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Megan, what Amazing. traditions do you have? Anything like killing people with a pudding full of booze or? She's on a goss um, farm. I presume there's a goss yule log and you get the little <laughs> skeleton in like in like Christmas hats and it's very... What did you... Tell Christmas Megan what you said when the cookies came up. They better be skull, Santa skulls, bitch. <laughs> you know what? I wanted to go so dark with that Christmas episode, but I kind of had a gut feeling that they really wanted it a little bit merry and bright. <laughs> so I had to pull. I had to pull it out of my deep down inside of trying to find the merriness. Um, but you should see. You should see the gingerbread house I created today for my kids. It's zombie gingerbread house. It's all gothic and dark and doomy. And I'm like, there you go, kids. Here's your festive Christmas. <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> Celebrate the joys of surviving the apocalypse. Okay. Right? Friends exactly. The most goth couple we know, yet they have the most festive household. Like, just... Yes. Oh. It's very dark and gothic with a That's very cool. festive and bright house. It's amazing. We're the most Christmassy house in the You can do both sides. Yeah, I'm pagan. Chris is a humanist. And we have a Doctor Who themed... Um, a Christmas light display, complete with blow up. Oh, light. I love that. <laughs> complete with inflatable Dalek and flashing TARDIS. So, yeah. um, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, again, and and yes, the, the the pagan and the atheist humanist. It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's it's wonderful. Um, well, have fun with it, right? Oh, one hundred percent. It's all about for me. It's yeah. a celebration of lights. Got any um, decorations going on there, Tim? Like any kind of like medical equipment that you've appropriate. <laughs> Honestly, any time I like, I'm decked out in like my white coat and my stethoscope. It feels more like Halloween costume at this point. <laughs> so, because as first year medical student, we know basically nothing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm um, definitely not sticking with a the medical theme. And now that I'm on break, I am going to put that behind me until I have to come back to it. Because it's really um, these past six months, I've been a lot. So no. I'm happy to put that down for a bit. Yeah. Um, you're walking, you're walking but, right now hoping to pick up the knowledge by osmosis. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, when I actually do graduate and then there's that moment of, is anyone here a doctor? We need help. I'd be like, I really hope someone else calls up. <laughs> you, but you play trombone, don't you? Or trumpet? You yeah, play trombone. I do trombone, play trombone. Yeah. You could just go out uh, caroling with a trombone. I just... Oh, yeah. I mean, but then I also run the risk of having my lips be frozen to the mouthpiece. Because <laughs> I mentioned it's cold. Yeah, again, he should You need someone there to warm your trombone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just put uh, James's pudding underneath. <laughs> it's such low <laughs> hanging fruit. Fire, isn't it, James? <laughs> Do they ever put it out? <laughs> but let's see, Christy, Christy, Tim should save his tromboning for the most important time of the year Eurovision. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, and, I you know, just today, Albania shows their uh, song. I haven't, I've got to go look that up. Oh, Not yeah. a second, we're on a podcast. Okay, yeah, right, right now, right now. <laughs> yeah, we, we, start, we start looking at the national final. Uh, we start looking at the national mm. finals about January and stuff. Australia's right? got some good um, uh, possibilities coming up. We're choosing in February and there's a, mm -hmm. like, Montaigne, who is fucking awesome, um, is... Megan's going, I don't know what the hell is. Yeah, yeah. That's all right, <laughs> I, Megan. I really have no idea any of what you guys are talking about. James <laughs> is like going a typical... Like, as James a typical is going, person. I escaped this. <laughs> no, I <don't. laughs> God, we're on Eurovision again. Yeah, Eurovision again. <laughs> it's, it's like I, I, don't know whether, I don't know whether Britain's going to do Eurovision anymore now we've Brexited. <laughs> but you're still paying the EBU, so yeah. I, know, yeah. I mean, it could be great. I mean, that could be fun though, because like they complained the Iraq War was the reason they didn't get votes one year, not the fact they were flat. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll find something else to blame it on this time. Yeah. Yeah, you're going. You're going really. That that whole Brexit thing going really well. Anyway. Yes, well, brilliantly. Yeah, like really. <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. Like Australians. We're, we're I mean, now... James had taken his own Brexit to Canada. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did that long ago. You're the, you're the hipster of Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> I Brexited before it was cool. Exactly. Um, <laughs> no, so actually, let's go back to, to speaking of Brexit and, and the British Empire. Oh, God. <laughs> and James goes, it's got to be me. Um, <laughs> Megan, no. Um, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Gin and tonic <laughs> Christmas card cookies. Yeah. Very British. <laughs> Very British, you think. When did that inspiration hit you? That's, I, I, like, I have to admit, that is a cookie I made a couple of years ago. And Ooh. it was, um, it, was uh, it was just really good. And uh, I was thinking of what cookies to make. And um, 
I realised we still had a bag of juniper berries in the cupboard, so that was what I went with. <laughs> he brought forth juniper berries. Um, <laughs> of course he brought forth juniper berries. They came from juniper bushes. What do you expect? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to do the rest of life, Brian. We'll let that go. Yes, please. <laughs> but... but- I like to have a, I like to make sure I've got a drink on the bench in the first, uh, you know. <laughs> now that is whatever that it is, is. Yeah, that was a pro move having that um, G and T sampler there. Um, <laughs> so when Carolyn came around, G and T in a measuring jug. Yeah. yeah. What I what I appreciate it too is because you know again we've talked about this and we'll come to this in a minute because of course you're all dealing with new hosts and one new judge. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I love the fact that like. You remember that the, the hosts come around and usually steal your food. So James is like, <laughs> I got the solution. Booze. <laughs> we'll just put the booze there and go go for it. Who else came back for a bit of a sample? <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone was having a little sample of that. <laughs> I was going to say, were, were all the bakers who came back at the end to sort of applaud you all and cel- celebrate, were they all there simply so <laughs> they could, like, get the booze? Yeah. Yeah. I think it had gone by then. <laughs> There's messages going around going, James is making gin and tonic. <laughs> Colin wasn't going to sing, but he got a bit of g and to him. He's like, bitches, I'm here. Let's do this. <laughs> but it was interesting. And, and Tim, of course, you made alpacas. <gasps> what? What, what, what brought alpacas to mind? Like, what? Talk us through that inspo. Yeah, I've seen a couple of them being done on Instagram and I was like, what a brilliant idea. And really, uh, Kim Joy, also from the British version, she posted the most adorable ones. So I was like, well, I'll have my hand at them too. And then I just <laughs> drew one up and it looked kind of okay. The first one I drew, I forgot to like add like a neck, so that was kind of a big problem. Um, <laughs> but after that, I just kind of designed them with kind of the, uh, putting on a Christmas theme on them. And I thought they turned out really cute. So I was like, okay, this is what we're running with. Yes, they were adorable. Did you know in Australia, alpacas became like huge breeding like stock like in the early oh, really? 90s everyone was all about the alpaca wool so <laughs> you could just be driving along in random country areas in australia and just see alpacas staring at you yeah, not, even, not even vaguely local no, just... No, just, just hanging out like, okay. they came on a holiday never left yeah i mean i mean sheep and sheep and cows also aren't they came a staycation yeah. um <laughs> see i wish i'd known that i could have told all of canada <laughs> it, could have, mm-hmm. it, it could have been added to it. That would have been amazing. Mm. Um, and, and Megan, we have to talk about the... the your balls. The, yeah, we have to talk about your balls. My um, balls. You flushed yeah. your balls. balls. Yeah, Christy was like, oh my God, Megan's handling those balls. Look at her. She's, <laughs> she's making them. Maybe carry <laughs> so the snow globe idea was really cool. Like, it was really Did cool. you think it was ambitious for two and a half hours though? Uh, now I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like... When I was planning it out, I was like, oh, gosh, like, this is okay. This is good. This, what can come about? But <laughs> once, I, once I, of course, got in there, I was like, crap, crap, what have I done? <laughs> so the snow globes weren't as perfect, of course, as what I wanted. None of them were exactly at all of what I imagined. But I, you it know, they pretty effective. Though. They hung. Yeah. My, my balls hung. So <laughs> we're good. The balls hang. It is. You know, yeah. the balls in, a, in yep. to be sturdy enough to hang. <laughs> yes, you know, that's like, right. And what's the point? We're half a step away. Exactly. We're special here. We're half a step away. No, we're not yakety sacking. You can do it with bells and then it'll sound Christmassy. And I mean, some of them would have No, don't look up Christmas bells for yakety sack. And of course, some of them were illuminated, which was Yes, yeah. And again, and. We've, I mean, not not a first, obviously, for for Great Canadian Baking Show. I mean, somebody else rigged up an entire solar house. Um, <laughs> don't know who that was, but <laughs> solar solar house. Who is that? I don't know, James. James. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yes. well, illumination. Illumination. Yeah. yeah. I still what? actually have those solar panels, and they still have um, sugar all over them. I was about to say, they're still <laughs> caked into something, aren't they? <laughs> they're still caked in, like, what is it, two, three-year-old gingerbread now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd like to know what scenario the, the two to three-year-old gingerbreaded solar panels pop up and you're like, great idea, let's use them. Go camping or something, or yeah. you're out on the beach having, like, a picnic and you just want to keep your phone charged or, or exactly. so you can listen to your music. I mean, you're just going to have ants crawling all over. You can sell them to Liam from this year's. Because, yes. you know, when Liam's <laughs> camping, just 
himself into Liam. He can yeah. use. He could probably use solar panels while he camps. Well, Colin's joining him now, so maybe oh, Chris just, is coming. Chris, him. sorry, yeah. Chris. I just get confused with C's. <laughs> So many C's. Which is not a problem at all when you're married to one. Anyway. Um, you're a bit of a C, my love. <laughs> thank you for that. Anyway, I knew that was coming. Um, now, now, Tim, in the cookie challenge, we're going to move straight past that comment. We're going to pretend it never happened. Um, in, that, in that challenge, you were worried that the colours of the cookies were going to be, like, garish. They're yeah. supposed to be. It's, it's Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> well, I just remember that one comment from Meng Ling in season one where she added too much green food coloring to her cake and she was just like, it looks like the hog, it looks so garish. Uh, <laughs> and not commit that same fault that Meng Ling was so distraught over. But I mean, again, <laughs> the difference being you're in a holiday special, it's expected of you. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But I remember I had, I had a friend and they said, Tim, when you're going to the tent, make sure that you make the colors pastel. Pastel is cute. They didn't want to make it on. And um, I think it turned out all right. Yeah, it did. They looked fantastic. I was down for your alpacas. Um, what, oh, what was the other thing? Oh, and rosemary in the chocolate. I think yeah. that was inspired. Not as inspired as G&T. If you could go back and booze it up, what would you think? Like, there's no rosemary-based booze, is it? I mean, but I did have some uh, yeah. Kirsch in the icing. Oh, you did too. Oh, Kirsch my God. Icing. I forgot. I was going to correct you on that. And then I'm like, you she'll should've... remember it. She'll remember it. She'll no, remember I won't. It. Because I'm like deprived of oxygen at the moment. I've only got to work three more hours this year, thank fuck. I feel sorry for everyone that I'm serving. But no, I mean, and, and, and I mean, they did say that the kirsch was balanced, and I'm like, that's great. But what you're really looking for in a Christmas bake is, as mm. already pointed out with the pudding, mm. blow your head off levels of booze. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was desiring the recipe. I, was, <laughs> I need something to make this uh, icing a bit more interesting. I looked at my covered i was like this booze this uh kirish i'll just throw that in and it was leftovers from the uh, black forest challenge we had in season two <laughs> <laughs> the solution is always booze yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a bake-off so there's a reason why and we haven't done the drinking game card for the canadians so most of the canadian listeners don't necessarily know about it but for australian we do the drinking game card Every week we do a drinking game card. Don't say that's the Canadian. And, they're gonna think we don't like them. And booze, it's very what hard to do, do it from distance. Um, booze in a bake is one of the most common squares that people, ironically enough, have to drink okay. on. Um, <laughs> or eat a cheesel. Before I, even, before I even went on the first season, I, I read an interview with one of the British bakers from one of the early seasons. And mm. she had this like five things to do to succeed on Bake Off. <laughs> like you can find it. I can't remember who it was now, but you like won't no, believe number three. <laughs> number one was put bru- booze in it. Like number yep. one is like whatever it is, just put booze in it. Like, well, again, when when when, when Barry Barry was judging British, a guaranteed solution. A bruise of booze. Bruise, bruise up for booze as well. In Australia, the the Australian judges are, are, are fond of a tipple, um, so they like that as well. And obviously, you know, Bruno seems to really love it when the booze comes out. So the other four tips, James, were they also set, centered on booze, or were they? I think, I think I got as far as the first one and thought that was probably enough. To go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's, that's really all you need. So, so when we get towards the, the, the judging for that first challenge, it gives us a chance to talk about the fact that you're all in there with, except for Bruno, people you've not done this show with before. How different was that? Anyone can take this one? I don't care. <laughs> James is not himself. <laughs> this is a welfare. This is a welfare one. We were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. Um, it, it was kind of. I was odd, but like they, the new host particularly, just seemed immediately at home there. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and the new judge as well. They were. They were just. Um, they were kind of really friendly, and 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 we got right back into it. a lot of the background crew, the the, the behind camera crew, were were the same actually. So. It was nice to see them again as well. So it, it didn't mm-hmm. seem un- so unfamiliar. And were they all wearing um, hazmat suits around your bench, James? Is that <laughs> 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 the crew that knew you? Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it it, it just seemed. Uh, I think we all kind of uh, became kind of uh, reacclimatized to the tent really quickly. Mm-hmm. Well, we noticed at first. You're like, where the f- <laughs> You didn't see that, you're just like, where the fuck is everything? Where is everything? Like, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I couldn't remember where anything was. In, in the- <laughs> I was right with you, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and it, it seems, and, and again, we, we've commented on this with the new series, but it seemed like, first of all, that Carolyn and Aurora, like, they get it. 
Mm-hmm. They, they get the show and they understand that dynamic really well. And mm-hmm. the interactions with the bakers always seemed really cool. Like, and, and again, it wasn't that, you know, previously, obviously that same, it was the same, but different thing. The dynamic is obviously different. It was good, but different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone's good, um, but different. But yeah. just, they seem, because also they've, they've, you know, worked together for so long and they've got that dynamic with themselves. Just taking the piss out of they, each other, They just really. bring everyone, it seems like they just bring everyone along for the ride. <laughs> you know, and, and make you all feel like welcome. So, so to a big fan of their show as well, so I was totally fanboying when they first arrived. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been sharing a bunch of the Baroness von Sketch stuff, actually. It's, it's, there's some really <clears throat> stuff there. I'm, I'm really, I love what they do. I'm a big fan of um, French and Saunders and, like, good female duos because, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's not enough women in comedy that, and <coughs> they do it well, mm. which is... Yeah, they do. Yeah. And, and, and was it, did you feel... Did you feel like, um, Megan, did you feel like, for example, that you needed to adjust to what maybe Kyla's style of judging? Did you do any reconnaissance? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. You know, like I, once I found out it was Kyla as the new judge and then I found out that I was, you know, privileged enough to be on this episode, I did a lot of background checking on her. I felt like kind of a stalker for a bit. (laughs) She is just, I mean, she's so knowledgeable, just like Rochelle was, but she is just such a sweet demeanor person that I almost felt a little bit more relaxed going in, which maybe shows in my bakes not being as good as I wanted them to be. But <laughs> she was, um, she was, she was really sweet, but she knew a lot. But I think the most that I took away from it was that she gave criticism, which is, I think what Mm. we all were there for is to grow and learn as bakers. But she gave criticism with a follow up of like Mm. something that you can do to improve Mm. what Mm -hmm. mistake you made, which I feel like in our season, as great as the judges were, they would give criticism and Rochelle or Bruno or any of them, sometimes it wouldn't be followed up by being like a hint to help us. And I feel like Kyla offered a lot of help which she she just has the sweetest heart. I adored her so much. Yeah, that's and that's really important that you sort of get not just the whole, you know, this is a problem or this is or this is really good. You want to know why and how and how it can be made better or what you've done that was so good that you're like, hey, that's something I should probably yeah. keep doing. A bit of coaching and mentoring is awesome. Yeah, yeah, because I think it's hard for us all to rem- like remember that we are home bakers. We're amateur bakers. We have studied and learned what we know through ourselves. And we go up against these people that are so knowledgeable and so amazing and professional on like on TV Mm -hmm. that it's nice to be offered those little helpful hints to further what we have like dove into. Mm. Uh, And I think, you know, it shows like example, it's exemplified by our dear Tim here who is basically went from being a Padawan on his, on his episode to a Jedi Knight. You keep making Star Wars references to the one person who won't get them. That's right. <laughs> you know, I've never seen Star Wars one day in my life. You're going to oh, hate I'm, me from now on. I'm so <laughs> glad to hear someone else. Oh, dear. Dear. It's okay. We all have our nerddoms. Yeah. And you've just got <laughs> nerddom that makes you sing. And that won't stop me from talking about it. And, and uh, but okay. the thing for, for you, Tim, was that apparently the, the, the change in scenery around you, you seem to adjust to it really well. <laughs> <laughs> so she um, did so amazing yes i know oh, right. and, like and that was the, from the first i think from the first bake when the cook- cookie started and christy yeah. hadn't seen any of the spoilers so didn't didn't know what was happening no and we got halfway through the cookies and christy's looked at me and she goes timothy's winning this <laughs> 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 She's right up front all right yep. so yeah yeah talk- i pretty much threw in the towel yeah, that point was over. I saw the alpacas and I'm like, screw the, screw the rest. I'm drinking like, James's concoction. I'm done. <laughs> no, no, no. You like James? Oh my god, but I've got gin and tonic. This, this yeah, this. yeah. Timothy's got this. Let's just drink. <laughs> uh, I mean, no, but like, I think that's uh, just a show shows that um, people's minds work in different ways. Because when I saw Megan's 3D ornaments, I was like, it's over. <laughs> oh yeah, oh. right. No, yeah, really. Right. They look like... I was planning my bakes. I thought I was going also to do a 3D kind of sugar dome kind of thing, and I just gave up on it. I was like, it was too ambitious. Mm-hmm. Brave yeah, enough. well, it was. It really was. It was stupid. <laughs> no, I thought they were amazing. You heard me in the show. I was just blown away when there were lights. I was like, that's the next level. 
Wasn't well, that was the dog collar lights that I threw in there at the last <laughs> minute that like was like, just distract them from how ugly the outside is, please. Oh, how brilliant. <laughs> this has to be how one brilliant. of the most Canadian conversations I've ever heard. Oh no, mine was terrible. Yours was <laughs> oh, no, mine was yours was amazing. And James is sitting there going, I had gin and tonic. Um, <laughs> and and of course, one of the most statement James Lyons ever, which is just this is going to get messy. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's I like I don't do a lot of like colorful decorating. Like if if everyone ever sees my Instagram feed, it's brown. I make I make brown <laughs> things. That's what I do. So like putting like color into things because I hate filling piping bags. Like <laughs> every time I try to do it, a freaking mess. And if I try to use more than two colors, everything gets mixed. Everything gets colored. <laughs> Wrong colours end up everywhere. I don't know how people <laughs> keep them together. Like them. So it was for me it was really pushing the envelope to try and do those um like coloured Christmas cookies because it was just like, okay, I'm gonna have like six colours. Oh shit, this is gonna be a mess. <laughs> they were so good. <laughs> well, we've had this conversation before though on the on the podcast, because one of the reasons why I said apart from the messy stuff, one of the things I've said about why James is my I don't like icing things, I don't like it's just it's it's hassle and i just rather that the cake tastes really good yeah. <laughs> um like i don't really care about the icing bit it's just it's mess and it's undue stress and i it never looks good my my icing never looks good and i think that's why you did really well with that vegan cake you made for the gathering because it was all pretty anyway like all the different layers in the cake were pretty so you didn't have to decorate it because it was already i wasn't going to decorate that gorgeous. There, was no, there was no chance it had blueberries in it so it's this beautiful perfume. i made a vegan cheesecake for a cake. Ooh, okay. cool. which was i even bought him rose petals to put on top could he be fucked no <laughs> <laughs> like when I, when I make those gin and tonic cookies at home it's just like cut out round cookie and i've got like a bowl of icing sugar and gin <laughs> and then, like, I just dip them in the bowl of like, and gin. That's like... That is the best kind of fondue. <laughs> I'm starting to sense Biscuit there's a bit fondue. of a trend to food in James's house. <laughs> it involves soaking it in large quantities of booze for periods of time. <laughs> <laughs> never go to James's with an open flame. No. I've, just, I've just decided, never walk in the door and go, hey, I've got a candle. No, don't do no. that. Don't do that. That would be it's bad. The carol is a candle. <laughs> yeah, the carol is knocking at the door. Everybody hide. Um, so <laughs> the technicals. How much have you missed the technical? I, I actually oh. like the technicals. I, I always really liked the technicals. So what did apple butter end up being? Because I, oh I my god, yeah. it's just like it's just mel- like apples stewed and then mashed, basically. Okay. So as Tim said, baby food. As Tim said, yeah. it's an edgier apple sauce. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you yeah. just have to make it a bit thicker, cook out some of the water, get some of the caramelization going. And of course, yeah. I only realized that afterwards I Googled it after the challenge. <laughs> and it, that was one of those ones where it just said, like, in the instructions, it was make butter, make apple butter. Yeah, mm. and I mean, there's no pressure, but after the fact, when Bruno's talking about it and they're, they're looking at it and he goes, this is one of my favorite things. And everyone's like, mm. oh, great. So we're making one of Bruno's <laughs> yeah. favorite never heard of it. I'm just thinking, though, with it, then you could dip, like, like a biscuit or something in the apple butter, or so we could dip some pork in it because it's a fancy mm-hmm. apple sauce. Like yeah, dip- I think that's the same thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it all it all seems to work. Now we got one of the weirdest sentences I've ever heard, which was "eggs are weird." Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> These are ovulations but, that come out of a chicken's claw. <laughs> it's not just. As a, the word cloaca. But just as a statement on a baking show, eggs are weird. <laughs> Every, <laughs> if you stop and think about them, they're like, oh man, this is just a really weird thing. And like, <laughs> the, particularly like the whole whipping the whites that you like, dude, like who, who started that? Before they had electric mixers. So it's, someone literally just stood with a bowl of egg whites and whacked them really hard and said, I'm just going to do this for like 15 minutes and see what happens. Yes. Remember, there wasn't Netflix in medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> and realised that they had to be warm too, yeah. Yeah. which is disturbing. <laughs> that, like, you know, and everyone does that whole, the first human who decided, you know what, I can drink cow's milk. Yeah. How do we get to that point? Um, like eggs. Who <laughs> looked at an egg and went, you know what, if I crack this thing open, 
I can eat the insides. Yeah. And then if I whisk, mm -hmm. it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the, if I just whisk the white bit of it, it gets yeah. stuck and it, it, the process is bizarre. And, I make, yeah. I, and it has to be in something that is scrupulously clean. So <laughs> you have to mix. So you can't just use any old bowl that you found in the back of the peasant hovel where you were living. And so, <laughs> <laughs> <in> that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. It's like there's like some poor like cook for some lord somewhere who's like, you know, make me the fanciest thing that no one's ever seen before. And <laughs> they've had like, you know, like just to sit there and think about it for far too long. I'd like to think that what actually happened was he was trying to poison him. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of went <laughs> going right. <laughs> and he's like, this is the most delicious thing ever. And he goes, I'm so pleased. Walks into the kitchen. Damn. <laughs> I thought, I had, it. I thought yeah. I had it. Now, um, in terms of what you were making, it's though, okay. for the technical... It's okay, dysentery session a few days <laughs> later. <laughs> what you were making for the technical... The came. What you are making, of course, for the technical, you were making color. Now, we've seen this in Kiwi Bake Off, of all things. Yeah, where well, they call it hella. Yeah, it was... It was that hella was, good. That was actually in Great Kiwi <laughs> Bake Off, um, which I think is the first time we've referenced the fact that a bake actually came from that show. Um, mm because yeah. not a lot of bakes did come from that show. Mm. Um, how many of you had vaguely made it, Tim heard had. of it? Yeah. Um, after season two wrapped, I wanted to... So the, the story is that for the Bread Week uh, technical challenge, uh, Devin and I thought it would be a challah. We were so convinced for yeah. some goddamn reason. We would spend the day before just practicing our braiding with yarn. So going into that technical, we were so ready. This is going to be a challah, and it was hot cross buns. And then we both finished in the bottom three. <laughs> so for it to come back during the holiday special, I was so psyched and I was ready for it. <laughs> like, I, I was prepped for a season wine. I didn't know existed. See? Yeah. Why you're a Jedi? Oh. <laughs> you know, these, these callbacks, you know, to things that you didn't realise you'd been prepared for. <laughs> yeah. It's, and I, I love the way, Megan, and I love the way you went, I make bread-ish sometimes. I mean, <laughs> not this bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get into that because someone was a bit bitter, and and what I loved was the way that you were trying to convince the audience at home that you weren't at all troubled by the, the plaiting, and not at all in any way, shape, or form am I troubled by this plaiting. <laughs> I mean, it's hey, I, culture's been doing it for hundreds of years. Are you over it? Well, well, no, not really, because like I just did a grad hair not too long ago that was the braiding of. Like a, a braid. I mean, I braid all the time. And I'm like, this is not the right way. I've made Hala before at home and I braided it according to hair and it was beautiful. This one, I, like it, it threw me for a loop as we all saw. Yeah, it was Beyond. a weird direction though. It was like, it was not any braiding that I'd ever, I've braided stuff and this was a weird instruction. Though, so Wasn't right. it? Thank you, James. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> like, Thank it you. Way, it was not the way I would have braided six strands but no no i like i took out the chopsticks or the skewers out of the drawer and i was like trying to braid these rigid met like wooden skewers from the drawer because i had nothing else to like wrap my mind around it and i'm like well this is making it worse because i can't braid wooden skewers but i just needed to like visually picture it in my head anyway yeah. meanwhile Kenny was sitting there going i won it was great <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> Oh, right. I, forgot to put, I forgot to put salt in mine, so that was. <laughs> <laughs> it, didn't, it, it didn't come out on the. For some reason, it didn't come out on the edit. But I, like, they mentioned it. Bruno mentioned it. It's like, there's no salt in it. I forgot to put it in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yours tasted so good, though. I, if, you, if you're on a low sodium diet, it's probably. It was great. great. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's blood pressure there, you know. It's just, Look, you, know, you were helpful. Different mm -hmm. dietary requirements are a thing. This is why we put you in charge of everyone's health at the start of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I have to wonder, though, if there's like a Vikings fan out there. Because you know how like in Vikings, every single Viking woman apparently has like the fish tail braid, like is it the fish, no, the fish bone braid mm -hmm. hairstyle. And I yep. just have to yep. wonder if there's like some Scandinavians or just Viking fans out there fish tail braiding their bread. And calling it Viking bread. Well, I, I, that's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. See, for me, it just looked like before you were all braiding, it just looked like you were all making Cthulhu. <laughs> like, that's all I saw. 
I just saw tentacles all over the place and I'm like, our Lord has risen. Um, <laughs> Have a very Lovecraft Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, while well, she's obviously not on the podcast at the moment, I did love watching Vandana just punching dough. <laughs> oh, I've got to punch it. It was just, I've got to punch this. I'm going to punch it again. It was so cute. <laughs> she, she was really enjoying that. And, and her giggles were adorable. Yeah. Like, I'm a giggler, but she, her giggles are next level. <laughs> and and I, Timothy actually had the correct method, by the way, while you were all working on kneading the dough stupidly. Timothy, <laughs> that's what a KitchenAid's for. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Genius. I mean, like you can do it by hand. I think it's, it just takes a bit of a more of a workout. That's it's longer, right. and I'm lazy, and I was That's already sweating so that. much. Yeah, I was already <laughs> sweating so much. I was like, I, I I'm, I'm tired. I'm literally <laughs> looking at my KitchenAid dough hook right here while we talk, and I'm like, that's why it exists. Look, you're a champion for people who don't have the spoons for like hands-on baking. You know, like yeah. some people for various reasons, like myself. I'm with you. Just fucking lazy. Although mm-hmm. I do like the feel of dough, but you know, just the energy. <laughs> we into it. Like we've got, we're in the modern world, people. This isn't 1463. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not 1463. Thank you for that astute. Um, what was going on in 1463? Um, they were working out what eggs did. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's, That's perfect. perfect. And, and how weird is it as well to go back into a situation where you're being judged? Like, how weird is that as a... Megan has children. I don't think she... Yeah, but they're not, like, putting her in a ranking. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Oh, they are. Yeah. They totally are. Oh, of course they are. Yeah. <laughs> My kids are, like, the worst judges in the world all the time. <laughs> Who's the tougher judge? Between my kids and Bruno and Kyla? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the ones I like care about more are Bruno and Kyla because I don't give a darn about what my yeah, kids I, was, I, was, I own them. Before so... <laughs> I knew the answer before you started it. You right? Know? Exactly. <laughs> I only care about Bruno and Kyla's judging. My kids can go hard off as much them. as I care. Thank you. So, James, you're yeah. at a shit level. Where, who's higher on that score between Kyla and Bruno and your kids? <laughs> my, uh, my son can, uh, it doesn't hold back if something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> He's keeping it real. Tell you like it is. <laughs> Tim, who judges you in your life? The family. Yeah, my family, uh, my parents, you know, they will give their honest opinions, which is helpful, but I don't always listen to them, right? Um, <laughs> I do remember, this is a funny story, but for my uh, audition bake, I brought in these red bean eclairs and my dad was like, I don't really like these. And I was like, whatever. So I just brought them in as is and I got cast. So it goes, yeah, hang, uh, on, hang on, go, go back to the red bean eclairs? I'm dead. Yeah, I'm no. Salivating. Yeah, I filled them with, with um, fresh strawberries, vanilla whipped cream and red bean. I <gasps> thought it was a hell of an eclair. Ooh. Did you have a chocolate on top or was it just? No. Oh, that's yeah. that sounds good. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a we're... bandit for red bean. You are things. a bandit for red bean. And I found out our local, not our local, but the Woolworths, which is a supermarket close to work, has red bean. Um, What are those things? You know, the squishy things. I've Mochi. Mochi. They have red Mochi, bean. Yeah. Oh, my God. And so just on the way to work occasionally, I'll just. Ch- dump, like dump in, dump. Dump, duck in. Oh, I can't think of words. Words are so over. <laughs> words. Like for a podcast, I should just be doing interpretive. You're going really well at this point uh, in time. <laughs> Megan, I thought you 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 sort of summed up a really good ethos of the way to approach this episode. And it's, you've sort of talked about it before, but the go big or go home. And since mm-hmm. I'm going home anyway, <laughs> if I don't go big, what's the point? <laughs> that's right. I think that's my stupid mentality. Like with this entire baking show thing is just like just go big and hate yourself later for it pretty much so <laughs> but i mean it's a, it's a way to a, it's a, it's a way to approach it and it's a way to make sure that like you have fun on it and the one thing that i think it came across for all four of you was that you would just genuinely seem to be having an absolute blast in there mhm yeah. 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 For the most part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I think so. Aside from like the heat and the yeah. exhaustion of the heat, I think the rest of it, like getting to know each other, like Timothy and I were very close before, but mm-hmm. getting to know James and Van Dan, it was just, it was magical because we felt like we already knew them. So to actually get yeah. to spend those few days together was just so, so, so special. Yeah. And then the baking, it was Christmas. So it was fun. The heat sucked ass, but the rest of it was amazing. <laughs> and- yeah. 
it's one of those things where, and we've talked about this a lot on both the Canadian and the Australian episodes, um, that idea of like the big, the bigger, broader sort of Bake Off family, which is, it's a, it's a real thing. It's, it's something that I yeah. think people don't really sort of see. We've seen a bit of it with the Australian and Canadian bakers sort of starting to mm-hmm. sort of talk to each other as well and sort of interact with each other. But mm-hmm. that feeling of that sort of broader being part of something that's a bit bigger and a bit broader and obviously all between the, the seasons over there, it sort of must give you all this, this feeling of like, even if you haven't met each other, that you sort of know each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's like me with the people I was on Romper Room with oh. and other people who've been on Romper Room. I mean, you all understand what it's like to be there with Miss Helena or Miss Megan. I mean, we had a different host. No idea. So, um. like, yeah, so it's a kid's show um, back in the 80s um, called Romper Room and you go on and you do a show and tell. Christy has a long history um, of being on Australian children's television. Uh, <laughs> yes, I was also on Vidiot. You might not know that, which is another <laughs> one. Because that was a bit painful, though, because I lost because I thought Tom Carroll was a golfer. Um, <laughs> a, um, I have no idea who Tom Carroll. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no. I love, I love a Christie story to Canadians. It's great. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just laughing because of what, like, listening to her say this. I have no <laughs> idea what she's saying. But she has though. a very long history of being on Australian children's hmm. television yeah. shows. There are a few I've learned on that I. Uh, Although I did have a friend that was on play school. Her, her mum was Dr. Bron, so she got to be the child. And she, was, <laughs> she was the child going to see her, the doctor who her was mama. her mum. <laughs> that just seems wrong. Yeah, it was. So, but it was interesting as well because I like the way they did the... Particularly when her mum went, oh, I think you were in a domestic abuse situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, so the way they did the ending I thought was really cool as well. Um, that was such a cool surprise. So, first of all, having all of these other... Now, now I do have to ask, what method of transportation did Andre bring? Um, was it a hot air balloon? Because <laughs> I, I <laughs> think that he travelled by hot air balloon to the, the, the grounds. Um, <laughs> has, he has related the story to us before, and we are hoping, by the way, to have him on in the very near future. Um, he has related the story to us before of sailing to Australia. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because of course Andre sailed to Australia. It's Andre. I thought he was in Australia the other day because there was someone legitimately riding a penny <laughs> farthing in our <laughs> suburb. <laughs> and it's not like they were in old fashioned dress. They were dressed in like the um the like the Tour de France lycra kind of shit with like the little little flashy thing on, on a the massive helmet. Old timey bike. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Andre's pictures on social media about his hike in the north of Canada? Yes. And, and he made he made like a chocolate cake with chocolate ganache. On yeah. A fire, like <laughs> I backwards, like just like in the middle of freaking nowhere. Is there is there is nothing that surprises me. There's nothing that surprises me about that man. There okay. is nothing that surprises me about that. CBC, man. I want you to get Andre and Liam together to do outdoor cooking. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I would with, subscribe to that. Do you subscribe? I have a hundred percent. That's a, that's a thing. Because I mean, we talked about it with him, obviously, on the podcast. But the turkey, the, the carrying the turkey in in the backpack, um, <laughs> like, and it wasn't a small turkey either. It was the size <laughs> of a small body. Um, <laughs> him and Andre as survivalist cooking. <laughs> What's the big yep. show called? Why have yep. they not done this? Naked yeah. and Outdoors Part that's Two. <laughs> no, that's got to happen. That's got to happen. Naked, naked and Afraid. Naked. No, we, could re- we, could re- we could rename that. We naked. could rename that. <laughs> yeah, Naked and Afraid and Hungry. It's going to be. <laughs> got to have a food angle there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cold and I'm lonely and there are wolves out of here. <laughs> but I'm naked. <laughs> Oh, that would be the greatest show ever. Um, <laughs> Liam with like, like you know, strategically placed food items and cooking utensils to, to make it yeah. Happy. Passing the turkey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> um, just a particularly large bowl. <laughs> where they were. Oh, <laughs> spectacular! That's so, a little Christmas party at the end. How how delightful was that? Did you know? Other, I presume you knew everyone else was there, or was that a surprise? I mean, we knew, we knew. Um, some of them were coming, but we I don't know if we knew exactly everyone because we had a we our brains were kind of occupied on something else, uh, mainly baking. 
<laughs> um, but it was really nice because, you know, Canada is so spread out that we don't get to see everyone so often. So it's good that we had a reason to have a little bit of a reunion. It was really fun. Tim's like, yeah, I was but... trying to win. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I, I really loved as well. And, and fans of the podcast will know this, of course. We were delighted by the cameo from Polite, Polite Disagreement, Disagreement. <laughs> Canada's greatest band. Um, AKA Colin. Up there um, with the tea party and um, what's yeah. that other one that you always listen to? What, which one? Um, the one that does the... Um, the Tragically Hip. Yes, Tragically Hip. Yeah, um, yeah again, polite mm-hmm. disagreement. You know, one mm-hmm. member, Colin, obviously, from Canada's favourite favorite boy band. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool too, like to see... Yeah. Like, it blended all the sort of seasons together. I was happy to see my yeah. tea party enthusiast, Anne-Marie, on the TV. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. I got to see Jeff Martin in a um, parlour gig the other week and it was just like 50 of us people crammed into someone's garage that was beautifully decorated and just Jeff Martin there playing away for us. And you were sending Emery lots of, look where I am, <laughs> photo. <laughs> photo. <laughs> she were here. And, I mean, the, of course, you know, you and you and Emery never spend any time together at all. No. Even it's, you don't, you barely talk. So, you know, <laughs> must have been great to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> so um now that this is over what other holiday cooking specials can we expect will there be a canada day cooking special um perhaps pancake pancake day that's a thing isn't it oh. shrove tuesday <laughs> every every day is pancake day in canada that's where <laughs> that's right every day great canadian baking show presents shrove <laughs> tuesday <laughs> what's troll oh shrove it's some it's shrove yeah. I, I think it's part of the um it's part of easter part yeah. of easter yeah like oh i'm gonna get crucified for this if yeah. my in-laws <laughs> listen to this <laughs> <laughs> more than i already more than i already am <laughs> so you talk about a lot of the root of most of these holidays because this is oh. your kind of your kind of area christy see i was really impressed with yours james because i don't know if you know the whole idea behind fly garrick being um related to Christmas, but apparently European shamans would go out very early and they had to go out early to collect the flyer garrick because the reindeers would go and eat them and that's why you get the idea of the flying reindeers because they'd eat them and go on a trip. Uh, I, <laughs> totally knew that. I totally knew that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> reindeer- they eat the reindeers? <laughs> no, no, the reindeers eat the flyer garrick. They freeze the flyer Oh, my garrick. gosh. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> get a little high and trippy. Um <laughs> So the village shaman would go out and get some fly agaric and then he would, cons- or she would consume the fly agaric and it would get a gift, like a message from the gods. And then they would pee into a bowl and share that around to share the gift with the villagers who would drink of this so they could have a lower dose um, oh my God. <laughs> and still receive a gift from the gods, but not quite as intense. So, so obviously when Dan and Tony, that's what he was going for. It was, yes. uh, yeah. So, you know, if you want to... I drew the line at peeing in it, though. I felt that. <laughs> Look, he thought about it, but then there's Canadian television standards. And... Yeah, yeah. Maybe... So, you know, it kind of looked like maybe someone had by the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't look the happy and bright brief that was really talked as... about before. It doesn't really translate as well as, like, you know, um, you know mischievous elves. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> elves or peeing in a bowl. Um, and... Like, Tim, are you going to be, like, expanding the Christmas fort this season? Like, is there going to be more more battlement, like, you know, some snow, snow-based snow trebuchets? Working drawbridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I, do have, I did have a working drawbridge idea for this fast fort, but I just kind of scrapped that because I was like, we're not smart enough to pull this off. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, right. There were, no, you were smart um, enough to look at the time and go, no. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes um, that showstopper really does. Uh, it was a tough one for all, all of us, so I hope to never revisit again. So you could have like a mounted caribou, um, what's it called, battalion. Like just... Like, <laughs> does it have diseases? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a reference that only the people on this podcast will get. <laughs> Bandits for gonorrhea. <gone> <laughs> yeah. I should probably explain, yes, explain it. So explain. we were talking before we started, and we might have mentioned the fact, and it's the fact that koalas <laughs> suffered from chlamydia. 
Yes. Are they caught it? <laughs> and, of, don't want to and, of, and Tim mentioned, <laughs> not only did he know this fact, but there was a rather exciting slide that he saw on this. Yeah, during my undergraduate degree. <laughs> yeah, which then led to us wondering what other animals had diseases and it led to caribou. <laughs> yeah, it led to caribou having gonorrhea. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So which, which animal do you think has an STI? Let us know in the comments. Um, <laughs> send, your pics to, send your pics to Tim so he can confirm. <laughs> Don't send photos of disease oh, animals. Does yeah. your pet have a weird bump? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put together a holiday calendar of the pictures. <laughs> Perfect. I will buy it. Grace bump with gonorrhea afflicted caribou. <laughs> Poor Grace. Poor anyway. Grace. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, I'm so <laughs> Grace, okay. We love Grace. Wonderful. <laughs> as far as we know. Although that would explain why their numbers are dwindling. <laughs> oh, I've lost Christy. She's oh, gone. No. There's tears. There's tears. Just green. And this is the spirit we're after. Not the STI bit, but laughter. <laughs> so, oh, this has been so much fun. We will get to talk everyone again at some point as well so don't panic and think oh this is the only time we'll hear from these people i'm hopeful that's not the case no because when i win the lottery like a big lottery and i've built my retreat slash podcast center slash all these other things that's going to have a massive like kitchen in there with several stations i might be inviting all the bakers from all the world to come and compete <laughs> oh, you can put us right back in it <laughs> yeah and I mean, it's coming to perform for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, of course. Um, and, and this will be coming out, obviously, for people, you know, right around Christmas time. But, but around New Year's time, we do have our first ever Commonwealth Logies. And these luminaries, of course, will be in the audience for that. Oh, absolutely. So that will be a fantastic time for all concerned. Yeah. Now, um, we do have an update about... Yeah, we do. We do have look, an update. We'll, we'll, we'll explain more. reasons. We'll yeah. explain more on the night. But the episode, the, um, the ceremony has moved. We were going to go to Hawaii, but after a recent controversial visit by a Prime Minister of Australia, and the fact it's not in the Commonwealth. Well, we've, we've, we've been asked to move the ceremony, so the, yep. the, the Virgie ceremony will be taking place in the lovely island nation of, of Tuvalu. Tuvalu. So um, <laughs> we'll send you guys your updated flight details so yep. you can get there, because obviously we, we want you in the front row. You know, mm. You've all won Virgies, obviously. Some people more than others, Megan. I'm not jealous at all. <laughs> I am still to win one, um, and it's my ceremony, and I'm still to win one. Um, You're on the fucking committee. I know. I, run, <laughs> and I still can't Pick win an award. Pick up your game. I know. It's horrible. Megan got four last time. So, like, Did I? Yeah. I remember <laughs> That's no, no. about the Yeah, She got four of them. She doesn't remember them. those shits. Tim's like, there are so many awards, Megan. It's hard for her to keep track of. Yeah, yeah, right. Loving yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. She was at the Regina Casino getting, getting you know, the, the drinks were flowing that night, so she probably doesn't remember them. Um, yeah, well, you were in Regina and didn't come to Alberta, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, we, we, it wasn't we were our in, fault. We were in the, debtor's prison, so... It was the Saturday <laughs> Association of Australia. Yeah, those horrible people. Um, and it, <laughs> thank you to the three of you for coming on. This has been an absolute joy and so much fun to do this episode. Um, Anything you want to plug? Yeah, plug away. So, Tim, you can start as the winner. Anything you want to plug? Oh, yeah. Um, I will be starting my own bakery. No, I'm just kidding. I am up to nothing. <laughs> um, if you want to um, catch up with me, I am at Timothy Bacon on Instagram, where you can see pretty much uh, not a lot going on. Ooh, all these, like, trade <laughs> montages as the Jedi baker he is. <laughs> <laughs> James, anything you wish to plug? Get out there, mention? Uh, no, I have, I have nothing to plug. Science in general. <laughs> Just, just, just a word in, in support of science. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, no, I have nothing to plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Megan. Well, I don't really know what plug means, but I'm just going to say thank you for having me because oh, it's yeah. so fun. <laughs> a plug basically means spruik or what support. Like, anything you want, anything to, you want us about. to talk about, or you want to say, get out and look go at and it. look at my business. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> no. There we no, go. I'm good. <laughs> Sorry. Support for anything. Um, <laughs> hey. Just science. Science and Tim's like in science and, and Tim's Instagram and just yeah. in general, you know, like Eurovision. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you all for coming on. Until next time, I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we will catch you all later. Do, 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 do. Merry fucking Christmas.